Hey, what's up, guys? We are back with episode 5 of Full Exploration Guide of X7.1. We are on quest 5. Um, so, one thing to keep in mind for this quest, it's different than the last four quests, is this quest and the next quest, 5 and 6, none of the final bosses have their special 3 active, okay? None of them. Not a single one of them. So, we're going to start off with number 1, path number 1. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so... It has Spite, which is very fun and interactive, Tranquility, and Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is basically if you evade 10 times, um, they become unblockable. So try to avoid that if you can. It has Spite and Tranquility. So every 20 seconds, all buffs and debuffs are removed from both champions, and both champions are set to zero power. So, um, also has Spite. You don't really want to use characters that have any buffs. Um, so... I used Ghost Wasp Hood, okay, and I tried to get to a special two really quickly and I throw it. But most of the time they would um, most of the time we'd get power drain before they could even use their special three, so that's fun. Where am I? Okay, I'm all over here. And then so that's fun. And then I also brought Captain America Infinity War for parry heavy because he um doesn't rely on any buffs and after twenty seconds it give it gets rid of the suicide masteries for me. And I also brought Archangel. So, I have Archangel with magic, in case you're wondering. So, I ghost this fight, ghost this fight, Archangel this fight. You go over here, you go way over here, ghost this fight. Um, Captain America Infinity War this fight, ghost this fight, whatever you want. Um, this path isn't that bad, you can really use any character in the entire game for it. So, yeah, you just gotta bring counters for, like, Abomination, like, who's the first guy? And, uh, magic. So, yeah. I'm going to go to the final boss. This is kind of an annoying boss. It's uh, Angela with Punisher's abilities, basically, and Punisher's animations. It also has, okay, so it has power overflow. Um, if the defender has twin power buffs, 10 prowess buffs, they be, when they activate a special attack, it becomes unblockable, so don't do that. Um, when a defender reaches two bars of power, they gain an indefinite power buff every two seconds. So you really don't want them to get, you really don't want to push her over special two, like, at all. Extend the defender's buffs and debuffs inflicted last 150% longer. So, I guess just don't get hit from the bleeds. And then Mighty Charge 1 when performing a medium dash. The performing... Uh, it purifies all debuffs um, on the opponent. So, that's hard enough as is. And it's Punisher. But then you have Mercy. So, whenever the attacker avoids a hit with the Dexterity Mastery, they get a Mercy passive. Executing a well-timed block will remove all Mercy passives from the attacker and apply them to the defender. But they will fall off one at a time every 1.5 seconds. The defender reduces damage taken from all sources by 90% unless they have a mercy passive. If the defender has a mercy passive, the attacker gains 80% attack rating for their special attacks. Basically, uh, I just said a lot of words, but basically what this is, is every time you dex, you're going to build up a passive um, charge of mercy on yourself. You dex 10 times, you have 10 charges. The second you parry them, it'll activate all 10 of those, and you'll have 15 seconds, because each one's 1.5 seconds, to have your damage window. That's basically how it works, and you can stack these. So you have 10, say you parry, it's 15 seconds, and then you dexterity a little bit more, you get like 5 more charges, and then you re-parry, it'll just add to the total you have, and just, it won't like reset it, so. Um, it's not the most fun node. Um, I, personally, I think the best counter is Archangel, because you can, um, just, you can get a few Mercy nodes, okay, get 3 Neurotoxins, and then when you parry, and you put it on them, and all the Mercies fall off, because you still have three or four neurotoxins on them, um, the mercy node will kind of just turn off, and it's basically just not even a node anymore. So yeah, you'll do normal damage again. So ability axe reduction with archangel is very fun indeed. Um, I think uh, what's his name, uh, Magneto is really good for this fight because they're metal. Um, basically, you can just build up your special three, activate all your mercy charges, and then throw the special three. Should be pretty fun. Um, yeah, really, um, any character, if you can really use any character, if you know how to dodge, um, Punisher Special 1, but if I had to guess, only, like, really no one watching this video knows I do that consistently. Maybe, like, one or two of you, but that shit's hard. <laughs> I never really learned. So, you just gotta take block damage up the ass. So, it's really not that much fun of a fight. You just gotta slow play it. You only got a damage window. If you have a character that does massive damage, like, on specials, Maybe like save up all your mercy, then right when you activate your parry, then that's when you activate your specials. So yeah, there's a lot of ways around this, but it's just not a fun node. So yeah. But keep in mind she does not have special three active, so you can just push her. 
Next we go to path number two. This is a bully path. You got energy adoption, fire, shake it off, poison, bleed vulnerability. So, energy adoption, fire. They have a 50% chance to inflict an attack or incinerate every time you get, a, you get hit or blocked or whatever. Um, it will not to activate while um, they have a bleed on them, okay? And then if they have a bleed on them, it also does 200% more damage. So if you have bleed, you're doing crazy damage. Shake it off. Skill attackers purify one debuff whenever they dash backwards. The number of purifies um, increases by one for every subsequent dash performed in a row. What that means is say you have three debuffs on you. You dash back twice in a row. The first one will take away one of the debuffs and the second one will take away two of the debuffs. So it'll get rid of all three debuffs. And then poison every um, seven seconds does a small poison. Basically, you could use Ghost and just cheese with the Energy Adoption Fire. Same thing with um, Colossus, because you can just abuse the um, all the debuffs they're giving you. Or you could use Nick Fury or any like character that any skill character that has bleed is really nice for this. Um, because or any skill character in general is probably good for this. Because basically, anytime you get the poison on you, okay, you can just swipe back to take it off of you. And the bleeds, you want Nick Fury probably because um, if you if they have bleed on them, then you won't take the incinerate. Right? You don't have to worry about it. So Nick Fury is just broken for this. I mean, OG Black Panther could probably do this too. I mean, any skill character that bleed it can just clap this path. Ghost, um, Colossus can clap it by just abusing all the debuffs they're giving you. So yeah, and it's the same boss, so it's not too fun. But the path is super easy, honestly, if you have the good counter. Even like Black Panther OG, I think, could cheese that path. Next we got path number three. This is not a fun path. It's Eternal Velocity, Dulled, Mighty Charge, and Foresight. Basically, um, crit chance is reduced by 50% for each buff on you and debuff on your opponent. But if you use Ghost or Corvus, you know, guaranteed crits, kind of ignore that. And then every time the defender is struck by a critical hit, even through a block, they increase their defensive power rate by 25% up to a maximum of 30%, of 300%. So you crit them 12 times, and they basically have permanent 300% power gain, which is very fun indeed. Mighty Charge gets rid of debuffs, obviously. Foresight, if you intercept, you do more damage. So I just used Ghost and kind of just did damage with the intercept node, and yeah, it was kind of just not fun, because after a few crits, they start getting big power gain. But with the intercept node, the fights end pretty quickly. Um, do not use Ghost for Magneto, because that will not be a fun time. You need to bring a Magneto counter for this. It doesn't crit a lot. I used Quake for this. Um, I just used Ghost for this. I used Ghost for this. Then I used Quake again for um, the second Magneto, and I also used Quake for Ebony Maw. Um, so yeah, this path isn't too fun, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Basically, the biggest problem is just you don't crit that much, and you also just get a shit ton of fucking um, uh, power gain on them. So it is kind of annoying, but what are you going to do? Then you finally get to this Electro boss, and... He is Electro. It's Luke Cage, but pretty much everything about him is Electro. His abilities, his animations. So yeah. Um, arrogance. Every 10 hits on the attacker's combo meter inflicts them with a fault or passive. So. Um, basically, you do a 5 hit combo, okay? And then you do another 5 hit combo. On the 10th hit, you'll get a falter. So just, just stay away for 3 seconds. So just know every 10 hits on the combo meter, there's going to be a falter for like 3 seconds. So just don't hit him after that. Should be fun. Uh, combo party, every 10 hits in the combo meter, you're, you're getting a per permanent cruelty buff, which is pretty nice. Critical setup, when the attacker ends combo with the same attack they ended with the previous combo with, the attack is guaranteed crit. And then some just like, um, unblockable, just don't get them over two bars of power, basically, is what these last two nodes are. Um, basically, just use anyone who's an immune to electro. Any electro counter is fine for this path, for this fight. So yeah, any electro counter in the game. You know, Namor, Stealth Suit Spider-Man, or not Stealth Suit, um, sorry, um, a Mega Red, um, can't use Archangel because he's bleed immune because he has Luke Cage's abilities for that. Um, so yeah, just bring an Electro counter and you should be fine. Quake works fine. Um, but this path, I'm not gonna lie, is not that fun. Let me go to path four. This is a pretty fun path, I'll give you the, it's a life cycle, which is an annoying node, but you get to basically just knock them down and then kill them in that window and they're knocked down. I'm not gonna read this node because there's a lot of words and you probably know what it is if you play this game for a while. Technical suppression, whenever the attack active, attacker activates a special attack, they have a 100% chance to heal block the, um, the defender for 8 seconds, so the defender is already heal block, the attacker instead gains a fury buff um, for 70%, hurt locker, don't use the same special in a row, and then the defender's healing abilities can't be reversed and this would occur there only instead of prevented from healing. So, wait, where's the note I was thinking of? Um, 
technical suppression makes it pretty fun. I brought for this path Guillotine 2099, Warlock, Magneto, Quake, and Omega. So you use Guillotine 2099 or Warlock for this fight. Guillotine 29 or Warlock for this fight because Warlock works really good with the life cycle because so, they can't heal. Guillotine or Warlock for this fight. Guillotine or Warlock for this fight. Warlock or Guillotine for this fight. Magneto for this fight just because it's a tech character. I mean, you can use Guillotine or Warlock, but Magneto just bullies robots. And then I brought that Omega Red for this guy. So yeah, you can switch out like a Guillotine or Warlock to replace with this guy. Um, I just like this pad because there's a lot of regen on it. So Guillotine 2099 and Warlock are just so good for that. Because Guillotine doesn't crit on this fight. Warlock can just turn off the healing. Warlock can turn off the healing here. Or out damage the regen, which is not that hard. Or they out damage the regen here. Or block it. Same thing for this fight. Warlock, Guillotine, out damage or block the regen. And then just Magneto one shots this fight. This path was really easy with the Warlock. I used Warlock for pretty much every fight. Um, if you have a Warlock, it's really easy. Um... Someone with a heal lock is very good. You don't want... The reason why that's so good is because, um... With life cycle, they'll heal if you kill them when they're not, um... They don't have the shield down. But Warlock, you know, you knock them down, and instead of regenerating 10%, they're just stuck at 1%, so you can just one-tap them. So Warlock, MVB for that path. Next we got path 5. Do not go gentle, foresight, and oscillate. Basically, they'll be going really aggressive and really defensive with oscillate. Foresight, if you intercept, you do 200% more damage. And then do not go gentle. For every five hits on your combo meter, they gain a charge, and um, if you kill them while they have any charges active, you take a big chunk of damage. Basically, you get rid of these charges by a heavy attack gets rid of one, and an intercept gets rid of two. So, Ghost, Intercept, mixed with Foresight, Ghost basically destroys this whole path. Um, you should bring like someone for this man thing, though, because Ghost cannot do that fight. Ghost can do pretty much every other fight on the path. Um, so, Ghost for everything except for man thing, bring one counter for man thing, Ghost for everything else. Um, Pretty much any character can do this path, but Ghost is the best. You just gotta go around, do not go gentle. Just make sure if you don't have, like anyone who's good for intercepting and you're scared of intercepting, just just each character that just heavies a lot should be pretty easy. Um, so you'll never have any of those charges on you. And then this final boss is a Nightcrawler. Um, it looks like Carnage. It has energy adoption, lightning, so it puts a shit ton of shocks on you. Um, Pulls and vulnerability, heal reversal, and just don't get him over two bars of power again, I guess. But it really doesn't matter for this fight, honestly. Ghost claps this fight's asshole. Um, Ghost is the easiest counter by far, I think. Because with Ghost, when you phase, you know, you can't be evaded. So you get him to hold block, and you can just change him into his easy phase where he can't evade. Because he can't evade when you're hitting into his block with Ghost. And then with this node, he's getting so much, like, you're getting so much, like, tiny-ass shocks on you. You can just convert him all to massive fury. So Ghost is the best for this fight. Really, any character can do it as long as you don't have big regen because both heal, both champions are just um, regenerations or reverse. So don't bring someone who um like is heals a lot, and so just be careful for that. Especially if you're running suicides. I run suicides. Ghost um gets rid of both debuffs, so it doesn't matter from willpower. So don't bring someone who relies on healing, and then pretty much any other person can do this fight as long as you have a way to get around energy adoption lightning. The shocks really don't do that much damage, um, but it won't trigger if they're suffering from a poison debuff. So you won't get shocked if they have a poison on them. So what you could do is just Mysterio slow play in the beginning, and then once you add some charges on him, um, just heavy attack, and then once you get the poison on them, you do a crazy amount more damage, and they can't get shocked. So yeah, it's really not that hard of a boss. It's just a Nightcrawler, so just parry three combo really, unless you have Ghost. So yeah, it's really easy. Next we got the final path, we got Unlimited Power, Mystic Ward, Mystic Curse, Buffet. Buffet is fun and interactive, love that big fat healing. Mystic Curse, whenever a Mystic Attacker activates a special attack, they poison the defender, dealing 100% of their attack rating as direct damage over 7 seconds. Um, the potency of the poison increases by 40% for each buff in the defender. Mix that with Unlimited Power, and every um, 10 seconds they will activate a permanent free buff for how many debuffs you put on them. So, use Clairvoyant. Stay in the mist, stay in the poison phase. Spam heavies. You put a lot of poisons on them. Turns off buffet basically. Then they get a crept and a buff from unlimited power. I think they're special too. You nullify all those furies and you get a massive um, poison on them. Best counter though by far is um, Ronin. Ronin cheese. They get a crept and a debuff, so you can just run in this entire goddamn path. It's really an easy path, honestly. And then you have the same boss. So yeah, just do the same counters once again. If you have ghost, she's easily the best counter. 
Um, bring anyone with shock immunity and you can one-shot this fight. Um, so yeah, it's not that hard. And just keep in mind, none of these bosses have their special three active. So yeah, that is quest five. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, lunch, guys, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.